All right, so the last time we were here, we planned a clay loom. So what we're going to do today is we're going to learn how to make the clay loom from a clay slab. And I'd also like to say that we are working with a live audience today, so that's very exciting. Today you are going to get a clay slab and I'd like you to um, utilize the plan that's also at your seat. So in your plan, before spring break, we actually chose a shape at the top. Um, then we looked at how a loom is constructed with our circle in the center for the weaving to go and then with the um, 9 to 11 circles on the outside. Does anyone remember how and why the 9 to 11 circles are there? Why do, why do we need 9 or 11 circles? Anyone remember? Yeah? So you can put um, the so like you could put the string in the 9 or 11 circles. You're right, a warp. But what do 9 and 11 have in common? Yeah? They're both uneven numbers. Yes, they're both odd numbers. So that odd number, 9 or 11, needs to be there or the circular loom will not work. The circular loom in large scale looks like this one over here, um, but a loom in general looks like this. So eventually we will have what's called our warp threads on it, and we will also have our weft threads or our weaving on it as well. Now your weaving will be in the center. So everything I tell you today needs to be done so that you can weave your circle um, inside this center point. So speaking of center points, that we looked at the um, way we can use a radial design. So a radial design is something with a center point. Can we say center point? Center point. And then there's repetition around the circle. Some ways you will see this in the real world could be um, in an iris of an eye, could be on a wheel, could be in a flower, in a, in a stylized sun when you draw the rays coming out from it. Anytime you have that center point and then repetition around the outside edge, we have a radial design. Now, we also looked at some other examples of um, radial designs that we'll talk about in a second. But the other thing that's important to note is that we are doing a relief sculpture today. So the relief sculpture is um, going to be mainly a sunk relief. Can we say sunk relief? Sunk, sunk relief. relief. And a sunk relief is when we can imprint or carve the um, details into the clay. So that means that we will start with a flat piece and it's sort of like drawing when we carve in our radial design in the end. Now, some of you though may choose to raise some of your work up to make it more like a low relief. Can we say low relief? Low relief. And the low relief is when it's a little bit more raised up. So the way that you can do that is raising some of your edges, which you all can see here. And the edges can be raised up or pulled up as well. Now, we are going to get started. So the first step of today is going to be me giving you a slab. Now the slab is already cut for you. The only difference between this slab that I've already cut for you and what it needs to become is how thin it is. It needs to be a little bit thinner and a little bit bigger. So, um, what you will do is you will first take your slab and you will wait for the rolling pin. I'm going to ask you to repeat me on that. What will we do? Wait for the rolling pin. We will wait for the rolling pin because there's about one or two for each row in the room. So that's one for each table to share. So while you're waiting for this rolling pin, make sure you have your placemat in front of you on your table and you can squeeze your clay a little bit to get it a little bit flatter. So I'm just squeezing, squeezing, squeezing everyone and I am going to squeeze my clay until it's a little bit flatter. Now, a guideline for the thickness you want it to be is about the thickness of your finger or a pencil. So what you can actually do is get two pencils from nearby on your table and you can lay them down where the clay is. Now, these pencils will be a guiding line to keep it flat. So what I'm now gonna do when I get the rolling pin after I have done what? Waited for the rolling pin. 
patiently. Then I have the rolling pin. You can roll it out. I do recommend standing up into it. Now, if you notice when I roll like this, it's getting longer. So if I want it to be a little bit wider, I'm going to have to flip it the other way and roll, 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 roll. So I'm rolling my clay, and, and if you roll it the opposite way, it will get wider. So now I can flip it the other way, <clears throat> and I do have my pencil guiding. You can just pass them with the rolling pin if you'd like, but they, those will be inside of your toolbox. The composition is going to be where we remember from our plan that we have to have a circle in the center and 9 to 11 holes around the outside. How many? 9, nine to 11 holes. holes. Right, so 9 or 11, I should say, because 10 won't work. So, I'm going to now get my pencil. And the most important second thing to remember is that we are sketching our shape. So we're going to sketch our shape big enough to fit this circle tool. So on your table, there are two types of circle tools. There are plastic and paper from the hallway uh, water fountain. It's the right size there. So these are not cookie cutters. Do not try to use them to press into your work because it will get stuck and it won't work out. This is more of an imprinting tool or a tracing tool. Now, I want to make sure I have enough room <coughs> on my clay to do this circle and then to also have the 9 to 11 holes around the outside edge. So what I will do first is I will sketch my shape. So what am I going to do? Sketch my shape. Notice that I didn't say to cut the shape because sketching first on a paper means what? What do we do when we sketch on a piece of paper? What does that mean? Yeah. So you're planning? I'm planning. Yes. What else am I doing? Raise your hand. A quick drawing? We're doing a quick drawing. We're planning. And last but not least, am I carving into my paper? No. No. Notice that word carving. I'm not carving into my paper. I am drawing lightly. So when I am ready to tr draw my shape from my plan for my loom, I'm going to draw lightly. Um, so that means we're not cutting yet. So I've rolled it out. I made sure that it's big enough to fit my circle and holes around it. Now I am sketching my shape, sketching, which was a triangle. Notice I also added a detail here, which is important with my sketch. And if you want to erase something, just use your finger. So I have, from my sketch, completed a plan that looks similar, an artwork that looks similar, triangle with zigzags on the side. When you know that the circle will fit inside and you have enough room for the 9 or 11 holes around it where we can build our warp, and you can look at mine here. I'll show you mine. Okay. So an example of that is the circle is in the center, and I have 9 to 11 holes around the outside edge here. Okay? We need that. So we don't want to cut the shape too small. Understood? Yes. yes. Now, speaking of cutting a shape, you don't even need to change it at all. If you're happy with that first organic shape of the clay, rather than geometric that you cut, that's okay too. You don't have to cut anything off. Once I know that that will fit, your next step is cutting. So I have first rolled it out. After I roll it, see how different that is in a line? After I roll it out, I'm going to sketch my shape, make sure the circle fits, and then I cut. Cutting can be done with either a pencil tool or inside of your toolbox, the orange toolbox, you can get a wooden tool, and the wooden tool and the pencil tool work just the same, just as well. Now, I call this shape the cookie, okay? <laughs> Do not peel the cookie. Peel the outside. Do not peel the cookie. Peel the outside, and that, that will be that. 
We will now look and see if we would like to use a texture plate. So a texture plate has a texture already there. It's different from um, your radial design. It will basically just cover the whole thing. Um, you could even either do this before or after you cut. Your choice. This one looks like rocks. This one looks like bricks. There are textures all the way around the room. This is little bumps. So I think I'm going to grab this rocky texture. And in order to press it in, I'm going to flip it down so the texture's imprinted. Okay, and I'm going to press as hard as I can. You really want to use your thumbs and press really, really, really hard so that the texture really gets in there. And then I'm going to peel it. And now you can see that my clay has that texture, which is really nice. Do you see that, everybody? Our next step, my friends, is getting one of the circle tools, whether it's a plastic or a, a paper, up to you. And this is not a cookie cutter, but you can use it to either um, imprint, which would be pressing in lightly, or, so I just pressed it in a little lightly, or you can use it as a tracing tool. And then you can cut around your circle. So I'm going to cut around my circle once I know it fits and I have enough room on the outside for holes. Now, what do we say about the cookie? Don't peel the cookie. Peel the outside, even if it's your loom. It's just easier that way. Peel the outside. <coughs> now, we only have two more steps. So our last two steps are the 9 or 11 holes. Um, start with 9 and if you feel like you need more, then you can. Now you may also, instead of cutting, sketch first. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The one thing I want to note, the clay will shrink a little bit, everyone. So when the clay shrinks later, these holes will get a little bit smaller. That means you may want to check the back and say, hmm, oh, when that's hard clay, when that's bisquare clay and not wet clay, let me show you. When this is uh, hard clay, that's going to be hard, my friends, to get yarn through. You don't want to give that battle to yourself. You really want to get those holes bigger now while you can still work with the clay. So next is just your radial design imprints. And I'm going to introduce you to some of those tools, and then we will get started. Now, I am looking for the students that are listening the best in order to choose who will start first. So keep that in mind through the last step here. For your radial design, you can use any of your tools. Can you draw a line? Yes. I can have straight lines coming out around my circle. That's just drawing, any type of line. We are later going to paint these. So you might think, what types of lines will I want to paint? Some of the tools are shaped like circles. So you can imprint, can we say imprint? Imprint. By pressing lightly to make your radial design. So that's just three repeating around. Some of the tools even make a radial design. So if you press it in, it will make a radial design around your radial design. Now some of the tools are shaped like triangles. And what do you think they imprint? Triangle. A triangle. So you can use the corner of it, and you can press the corner of the triangle in, and you will get a nice little uh, triangle imprint. So these are called imprints. And you may want to think about raising some of your uh, edges up before they dry to make more of a low relief. What is the one thing that I forgot to put on my work, which we always put on our artwork? Can anyone guess? Name. What is it? Name. Your name. Your name needs to go on your artwork. So I'll show you how to do that. You're going to carefully flip. And I'm going to pass the no names out last next time. So if you want it back first when we're painting, you want to make sure your name's on it. I'm writing Miss Olson. You write your full name. Just carve it in, but don't carve it so it goes to the other side. And that, my friends, is our circular loom relief sculpture. Are you ready to start? 
Are yes. you ready to start? Yes! yes.